One, two, one, two, three, four. Almost a weekend and you don't know what to do. Or you just need something fun to listen to. So, so fun. Yes, we're on the so air. So and the gang's all here, all things on the South Side. We're listening to the South Side Fun. Looking for the best South Side breweries. Or you might just need an awesome place to eat. Southside Pond! Greenwood Evergreen! Southside Blue Pond. Island Beverly. Pay listen, all sub to You're tuned in to the Southside Pod. Southside Pod! Old Plum Midlothian! Southside Pod! Old Fort Chicago Ridge, Flossmore, and Bridgeview. You're listening to Southside Pod! And we're doing most of the show in Lamont and Pollyanna Brewing Company. And it's all brought to you by Elite Benefits of America. Visit them today at EliteBenefits.net. Butch Zemar over there is going to help you find a way to bring premium health insurance to your employees at a very low cost. It's going to save you some money and make you the employer of choice. Give them a call today at 708-535-3006. Ryan and Brian from Pollyanna Brewing in Lamont. We were at their Oktoberfest just recently. Go back and listen to that episode on demand. Guys, tell me a little bit about that Oktoberfest beer as we kick things off here. That thing was great. Uh, so, the, you know, the recipe changes just a bit every year just to kind of improve it a little bit. Not that it needs much improvement, uh, but it is a beer that is a classically German. It's a traditional Meritzen, and it won a Great American Beer Fest Award a few years ago. So some some people think it's pretty good. Uh <laughs> But yeah, it's a traditional German, so German ingredients, German malt, German hops, German yeast, uh, extended lagering, which is aging it cold. Uh, so that's basically when the yeast cleans up some off flavors and just kind of develops that natural lager taste. Uh, so it takes some time to sit in the tank, but it's, it's worth it every year, and we make a lot of it. So uh, that beer has Lamont ties as well, so it was actually named after a... German immigrant that came to Lamont and opened up the Fruhof General Store. So there's a building right down the street from us that still says the Fruhof building on it. Uh, so we thought that that was a natural way to name one of our favorite German beers. Name it after a dude that came here around 1900 and start, started helping Lamont out. Yeah, I've noticed that Lamont itself is kind of like that in terms of the fact they, they, they embrace their history. They have an interesting history. They have a history that dates back a long time. And it's it's one of those places that if you haven't come out and visited it, you don't really understand the amount of history and what the place is, looks like. It's really kind of a cool area on the south side to go and, and visit. And and Ryan, you, you probably worked, I, I mean, I'm not going to put you down here, Brian, but I saw Ryan running around like crazy <laughs> at that festival. I know you've provided all the beer, but this guy here never stopped moving. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Be, I know you can go back and listen to it on Southside Pod. It's on demand, so go back and listen to that uh, episode. There's some great audio from it. But uh, tell people a little bit about what goes into that, because you did it out at the Forge. It was probably the biggest that you've ever done it before, and it looks like it was a big success. But tell me how you got to that yeah, point. so exciting. You know, we never really thought we'd be in the fest business until we won that award many years ago with Fruhoff and had this little party in our parking lot, and 50 people came out, and... 13 fests later, we have it now at a big venue like the Forge, and we had 3,300 people come out and uh, uh, great music acts, and it's just it's just been fun to grow the brand. People celebrating summer, people celebrating beer, um, and celebrating music. The brand is really growing. It's been really interesting to see the brand grow in a way that's you know we serve beer, we have our tap rooms, we you know we do our business, but man, people really get into this. So yeah, it was a huge success. We had a ton of fun. It took about six months to plan, but boy. We have partners like The Forge. I know they were happy, we're happy. So stay tuned for a 2022 uh, Oktoberfest back out there because it was a massive success. All right, we're going to taste some beers here in just one second. But before we start doing that, tell me a little bit about this location. You've got three of them right now, but this is the one that people are listening to Southside Pod. They're most likely to come and visit, and it's your original spot. So we were talking a little bit before we sat down here, so you might be repeating some stuff that I've already heard. But what you have a setup here, and I'll describe it for people, you walk in this nice building, okay? It's got some, you know, brick and wood on the walls, and it's, you know, it's a cool little spot. And you you have a bar, a couple bars, and some seating that's at a higher level, but people can look out over all of your tanks, see the brewing pot process. I could smell the wort, and I could, I could smell all the 
the little things that you would smell if you were walking through a brewery and seeing how they were making it. So I can actually watch what you're doing like from above, like a voyeur. Is this was this always the plan to have it this way? Yeah, bro. Really, it's it was. We fell in love with uh, Lamont because we fell in b- love with this space. Frankly, I mean, not that Lamont isn't a wonderful home, but it. Uh, yeah, we walked in the door and we saw this vision of just being intimate with the brewing process, sitting upstairs, watching, you know, all the work being done down below. You getting those aromas and smells, and just enjoying the beer that's being created ten feet from you, right below you, as the brewers are literally making it. So it's, uh, you know, that was our vision. I think we found a way to execute on it, and you know, Brian is. You know, and the crew has killed themselves every day since to, to make this wonderful uh, liquid uh, down below. So. Yeah, yeah. I want to know from the brewer, like, how often do you have to deal with the public, like, sitting above you? Does somebody start yelling down you about something? Do you feel like you're in a fishbowl while you're sitting here doing your work all day long? You know, it, it's pretty funny you ask that because uh, probably daily we get a, hey, brewer, what are you, what are you making? <laughs> or, you know, what you, you have to pass by to go to the restroom, so some people just kind of take it upon themselves to maybe step into an area they're not supposed to, but... Uh, you know that's part of the that's part of the fun, I guess. So it's 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 not a big deal. It's 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 something that gives the customer kind of that like that sense of belonging. The whole like I'm part of this process as well. Uh, you know they can ask the guy a question that what the, what are they making that day and come back a few weeks later and be drinking it. So it's it, it's cool. That is awesome. And do you, do you do tours? Do people like just look down, or do you actually have people walk through? So we've done formal tours. Uh, we stopped during doing it during COVID. Uh, we'll probably bring it back soon, uh, but we just didn't have a chance to do it for a while because of all the the rules and yeah, yeah. There's some something something pandemic. I yeah, understand yeah, what yeah. you have to say. All right, so we're going to talk about beer. We're going to try three different kinds of beers. We're hanging out here at Pollyanna Brewing. Give me the address real quick for people. Uh, Four thirty one Telcon. Lamont. In in beautiful Lamont. Okay, you got to throw beautiful in there because this area that you're in is absolutely picturesque. So you got to throw beautiful Lamont in. You would never know you're in the Chicago <laughs> suburbs when you drive over the bridge into downtown Lamont. You're absolutely right, Chris. <laughs> It is now time for your Southside Pod word on the street. And instead of going all over the Southside, let's just bring in a guest and focus on one area that's got a ton of stuff going on and you might want to visit. Joining me on the phone line, she's been on the show before, Lauren Cazola from Palos Heights. How are you, Lauren? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you? Thanks for having me again. Listen, I'm looking forward to getting out there. You guys are having your Touch a Truck and Treat event. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. So how does this work? Just like what a bunch of different things that kids would like in terms of like different kinds of trucks and and cars and I would imagine like fire trucks and maybe construction trucks, but they're also trick-or-treating at the same time? Yeah, we're giving um, families the opportunity to wear their Halloween costumes, you know, more than once. Um, So uh, participants get to come out and they get to sit in the driver's seat of like a garbage truck, a school bus, fire trucks, police vehicles, uh, tractors, a lot. Some of our public works are, they're going to bring out some of their trucks that they have. Um, So a whole wide variety of all types of different trucks and emergency vehicles. And the kids get to honk the horns and, you know, make all the noise in the world. And then at each different vehicle, they'll get to go trick-or-treating and get candy. So it's a huge night and the kids usually go home with a big bag of candy. (laughs) So it's pretty fun. And we actually also from the event runs from five to eight, but from five to five, 45, the first 45 minutes, we do a sensory friendly zone. So not as much honking and loud noises and flashing lights so that all can participate at this event. Um, so the first 45 minutes is a bit quieter than the rest of the event, but um, once that six o'clock hour comes on, it's pretty loud. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Uh, we're looking forward to being out there with you guys. Uh, we're, I, I, you know, I, I haven't been to very many of these. They seem to be like new things with the touching a truck thing. I've started to see them popping up all the time. Where does the idea come from and what's the response normally like for it? You get a lot of people out there? Oh, yeah. I um, Since I've been in the field, touch of trucks have been a very well-known thing. People usually do them in the summertime um, when the weather's a little bit nicer, but we wanted to do ours a little opposite and do it during Halloween. A lot of the trucks like to decorate as well, which makes it super fun. Um, and we usually get like a 1,000 to 2,000 people that come out to this event. So oh. we're happy. Yeah, it's a pretty – it's one of our biggest events that we have, um, and the community loves it, and people from the 
the surrounding communities also come and they enjoy it as well. So it's a pretty big event. (laughs) So it kicks off at five. It starts to get loud around six. But where exactly is it in Palos? It is going to be at the Palos Pool parking lot, which is located on like 76th Avenue and Route 83, right behind our city hall building. Um, Fairly easy to access, but I would come early because the parking sometimes is limited. But there will be additional parking in the PBO parking lot, which is just behind the police station right off right off of Route 83. All right. And it looks like in your area, trick-or-treating on Sunday the 31st is going to be from 3 to 7 p.m. for the kids. It's different everywhere. You know, I, I never realized that there were like trick-or-treating hours. Like when I was a kid, I just thought you just went out and you just went trick-or-treating. Like I never realized that either because I agree. <laughs> all I remember as a kid is being out all day long with my friends and coming home late at night. <laughs> exactly. Things are different now. <laughs> exactly. All right. So what else is coming up? Because it sounds like that's your big Halloween thing. That's that's what's going on. But then what do you have going on in November? Do you have anything else that uh, is in the hopper right now? You're always very busy, Lauren. Yeah, we have some really great um, events in November. One I really wanted to highlight was our Veterans Day breakfast. Um, We were unable to do it last year, but we're bringing it back, and it's a free breakfast for veterans, and they get to bring a guest and we have entertainment and the mayor comes and it's a really great day to just celebrate the veterans and that's going to be on November 10th and all they have to do if people want to come to it they just have to call the recreation uh, department and ask for Taylor and we'll get you down and you can bring a guest with you and we're going to serve breakfast and coffee and donuts and have a full spread and then we have a really awesome guy who comes out and he sings and plays guitar and he's going to have entertainment so it is on november 10th from 9 to 10 30 a.m um and it's we love doing this and giving back to our veterans because it's so important so any and all are welcome and then we also have our turkey shoot which is um a basketball free throwing shooting contest uh for the kids so um the winners of that we'll get an actual turkey, uh, Thanksgiving turkey to make on Thanksgiving Day or whenever they please. That event is on November 19th on a Friday night. We have it here at the Recreation Department in our gym. um, And we get parents to get involved with their kids. So it's a little contest of friendly contests for all ages. And then the next day on November 20th, we have our kids gobble wobble, which is a fun, just little miniature race that we're going to do in our indoor track for kids ages one years old, all the way to 10 years old. So that will be a fun time as well. You've got a lot of things going on. Yeah, we got some fun stuff going on for the holidays for sure. (laughs) You know, I, I also noticed, and you'll have to explain to me what this is. I've heard of farmer's markets before, but I see you have a winter market in Palos Heights at, the, yes. at your rec center. So there, there's one in November coming up on the 13th. There's another one in December later on. But what is a winter market? I'm so glad you mentioned that, Chris. Yeah. So we've done our outdoor market uh, that ran from May until October. We actually just finished that up last week. And our indoor market, we have some of the same vendors. We have a farmer, we have someone who sells tamales, olive oil, but we also like to bring in some craft vendors as well so that people can come here to the rec center on November 13th and shop for the holidays um, to, you know, support smaller businesses and the people that are kind of doing it out of their house. So we're going to have a wide variety of vendors. We're going to host it in our gym. We have about 30 vendors that are going to participate. So it's kind of like a craft fair, but it's a little bit more than that because we're going to sell not just crafts. We're going to sell food and soap. There will be a soap vendor. There's going to be someone selling jewelry. Um, So it's really fun. And again, something we had to postpone from last year. We haven't done it since 2019. So we got touch a truck and treat. That is the next big thing. I can't wait to be out there. It's going to be next Thursday on the 28th. Uh, remember, there is a sensory-friendly time at 5 o'clock, and then right around 6 o'clock, it'll start getting loud. But uh, a lot of people expected to be at this thing, a lot of trucks, uh, a lot of treats, and uh, I might even dress up myself, Lauren. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it, Chris. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> I have a confession to make. It's true. And I'm guessing you have done the same thing. Put more time into thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for your retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree with you. And I want to help you out. I've got a local, experienced, down-to-earth guy who's a friend of this show. He's got a get-to-know-you approach 
and do the right thing values. And he's been around for over 20 years right here on the South Side. His name is Tom Walsh. He's located on the corner of 111th and Kedzie and he's waiting for your call. In times of financial uncertainty, how can you stay on track? Call someone who's invested in your success. Reach out to Tom now, 773-779-0023, or pop in at the office right on 111th and Kedzie. Tell them we sent you. Edward Jones, making sense of investing, member SIPC. So I'm sitting here with these guys at Pollyanna, and Jason Berry walks in the door, and he is with the village of Lamont. And we met Jason way back in the in the in the episodes back at that Oktoberfest with Pollyanna, and he comes walking in here, and it looks like you have a ginormous list of things going on in Lamont. So you basically hijacked Southside Pod this week. It's all Lamont centric. It's like the Lamont episode of Southside Pod, yeah. drinking at Pollyanna, and you guys got stuff going on. It's the perfect time to talk about things because there's a ton of stuff every year in every village. When it comes to Halloween, and you guys are doing a Halloween hoedown on the 23rd, tell me about that real quick. That's right. It's it's La Monster Days. I know that's super <laughs> cute. Halloween hoedown is this Saturday, October 23rd. It starts at 1 p.m. in downtown Lamont with a kids' costume parade. So parents come out, line up at 12:30 at our Metro station right off Main Street, and all the kids march down Main Street and down Stevens Street. And from there, there's downtown trick-or-treating. It goes to 3 o'clock. We have art. We have hay rides around downtown. Uh, Lamont businesses are doing photo ops, selfies, games. Allegro Music Academy is doing a Halloween uh, dance performance on Canal Street. So a ton of stuff happening downtown that day. And then at 7 o'clock, head to the Forge, Lamont Quarries. They are showing the Nightmare Before Christmas. Friday, October 22nd. We have a Lamont Area Historical Society. They're showing Hocus Pocus, you know, classic cult film at the Old Stone Church. On Sunday, October 24th, the Lamont Junior Women's Club in the Lamont Township are hosting our annual Scarecrow Fest. That's out at the, uh, at the Nature Sanctuary that is off 127th Street. And you can vote for your favorite scarecrow. There's hay rides, there's crafts, lots of fun for kids. Wednesday, October 27th, Pollyanna has horror movie trivia night. And then Halloween weekend, October 29th and 30th, head back out to the Forge Lamont Quarries for Forge Fear Week. There is a trail search called The Tale of Talcott Stone. They have fireside ghost stories at their big fire pits with some moors. And there's a zombie apocalypse laser tag, which is super duper popular. So uh, don't forget when uh, the monster days are done at the end of October, come back in November and we'll keep it rolling. All right, so let me ask you this. I'm going through the list of the monster days, which started October the 1st. Yeah. Now I understand this flyer because this is a whole month of stuff going on in Lamont. And I get to October 30th and you're doing the Halloween blood drive. And please oh, tell me yes. that they'll be dressed like vampires, that they're taking your blood <laughs> and that you've gone yes. that direction. That's <laughs> yeah. what I want. Yeah, the Lamont Park District is doing a blood drive on October 30th. We're all in. We're all in. We're the monsters. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's the South Side Pod. It's the South Side Pod. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's the South Side Pod. It's the South Side Pod. OMG. OMG. It's the SSP. It's the SSP. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. It's the South Side Pod. It's the South Side Pod. So now at this point on Halloween, I figured we would actually have a contest, but I need a contestant, and Ed has volunteered yes. to be a member Thanks, of this. Ed. We're going to have a contest today. About time you Ed, participate in the show. Ed, I have what, I have what? $5 right here in front of me. $5. All right. Five dollars. Who's on that? Lincoln. Okay. What's he thinking? And and you get five dollars. He's drinking. And you get the five dollars if yeah. you can complete in thirty seconds the challenge that I have for the special Halloween thing. Thirty right, seconds. But challenge. you have to promise that no matter what the contest is, you will do it. Okay. If you do, if you don't do it, you're There's, off the show. We got it. We got to throw it out. Right. Show? Off the show. Off the show. Well, wait right? a minute. So it's either five bucks or I'm. I'm five banned? bucks. Or you're banned off the show. You're done. That's ridiculous. You don't even get to finish your beer. You have to leave. You know what? That's I'm going to throw an extra okay. five. Extra five. Extra five. Ten dollars. Ten dollars I like this. Who on else? the table. Anna, Mike. You... Acoustic Mike. Acoustic I, Mike. I got like 38 cents I'll throw in. Ten dollars so. or 38 cents. And a, and a CTA. Ten, a CTA oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There might be money on Let's it. Let's make sure we got all this right. We've got, we've got ten dollars. 
38 cents. You've got two more dollars? I got two bucks. Okay, so Hannah's got, so it's $12.38 and a CTA pass? A CTA pass. With um, an unknown amount of money I, on it. Who knows what's going to be? There could be millions $100? You could be playing for millions yes, of dollars. You I'll sell be. you a nipple, too. I don't right. care. Okay, and then, you get, <laughs> well, and then you get Wild Bill's nipple. <laughs> Do you accept the challenge? For Halloween. It's for the kids, Ed. It's for the kids. It's Halloween. It's yeah, for the okay, kids. fine, fine. For the kids. Okay. Well, how you can't deny kids? that. You can't deny the kids. You can't deny the kids. This okay. For the kids. It is now time, and I'm going to need some theme music here from uh, from uh, Wild Bill and Acoustic Mike. Ed, are you ready? It I'm is ready. now time for Find the Razor Blade. Wait, what? Find that razor blade. Find the razor blade. Find what? Find the razor blade. How do I find the razor blade? Well, we have three pieces of candy. Lay them out in front of uh, Ed. There we have a uh, we have a. Uh, we, they're all fun sizes. We have a fun size. It looks we like a, a Snickers. Right, a, we, uh, a we have a butter cup and. Uh, I don't know what that is. Mounds, maybe? Yes, it's a mounds. Okay. You're, you're very good at your yeah. candy bars. You, you're <laughs> I, able to I identify them. Okay. So in one of those candy bars, there is a razor blade. And Wait. you, in the interest of keeping children safe all okay. around the world today on Halloween, even even the children in Russia, the children oh, in man, Scandinavia, the, uh, the no, children in Brazil, don't. all Is the that children that are celebrating Halloween, okay, you are going to uh, try to see if you could find that razor blade. If okay, you so I just like, ripped, ripped the candy apart? No, 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 no. No, no hands. To, no hands. What do you mean, no hands? Well, you have to simulate what would happen if a child actually ate the thing with the razor blade. All right, Hannah, hold the microphone wait, no, for him because I'm about to zip tie your arms. Here we go. Hey, hey, wait, 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 all right. Wait, wait. And hold him back. Don't no, move. Zip tied, bro. You will have 30 Mike, seconds. Get your hands off. Wait. Ready your hand over the bell, Wild Bill. You have 30 seconds I don't to think find the razor blade idea. or you are off the show. Off this, is hand. Hand. this is for the kids, Ed. This is for the kids. Go! I'm talking too much. I had to get it. No, well, oh, he's okay. really into that one. Uh, well, what is that not, one? It, it isn't in the mounds bar. Oh, it isn't right. in the mounds bar. What is this happening? It's in the mounds bar. I told you it was right. mounds don't. He's got, don't. He's got 22 seconds hint. left. Okay. Okay. Alma uh, Joy's got I razor guess I'll blade. I go peanut butter cup. Peanut butter, you can't. It, it's yeah. too small. Okay, we'll try. 17 okay. seconds. Oh, this is disgusting, Chris. Okay. Why did you well, even make him do It is in the Snickers. Okay. You still have to eat it to see if it's in there. No. Maybe he didn't put it in there. You have 10 seconds left. Put your mouth in the Snickers. Put his face in there. I got it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Chris. Oh, my God. Oh, he's Chris. bleeding. He's bleeding out of his oh my mouth. God. Oh, my God. Dude. Oh, it's going to save oh the my. carpet. Holy oh, Chris, this was, time. this was a bad idea, dude. This, oh, Hold on a second, man. This is, this is not even cool. What did we learn? This is not good. Did you really put a razor blade in? Well, it was the game. It was huh? called radio, you idiot. No, it was called... Find that razor blade. Find that razor blade. Find that razor blade. He found it. He's not joking. Not breathing either. <laughs> Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, they want to get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial Representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708-425-1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. Back at Pollyanna Brewing Company, Brian and Ryan, and we're going to taste some beers right now. What are we doing here? Light to dark, dark to light. What do you guys want to do first? Let's go light to dark. Light to dark. All right. This one, the first one I think we've done on the show before, actually. Is this the one that we did before? You guys have mentioned this one before. Okay. Uh, Almost by name. Yeah, Bill, Bill, <laughs> Bill called it by the wrong name on that episode. He called it, I think, light drinking instead of light thinking. And it sounds to me, based upon our conversation earlier, that you guys were like, maybe we should have called it light. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's a light drinking beer. But uh, So yeah, this is one of those that uh, we named it light thinking because there's not a lot of thinking you need to do while you're drinking it. Yeah. It's pretty simple. It's an American lager. Uh, so... When you think of your classic American lagers, you know, you think of Budweiser, Miller, Hams, uh, all those classic ones. Schlitz is big around here, or Blatt's, uh, but this is kind of our version of it. So for a while, you know, we as brewers kind of like in the early craft beer movement, we tried to move away from this stuff. Right. Because it was cheap, it's it was lame. mass produced, it's, like it's what everybody lame. else is doing, right. Yeah. But then everybody kind of quickly realized that their palates were getting fatigued and you can make a great American lager, but still make it very craft focused. Right. So ours is what I think is a better version of a macro brand's American lager. 
And to prove it, we've won two Great American Beer Fest awards for that as well. Uh, it's kind of a trend that we have here. You guys win a lot of awards. <laughs> like, I, mean, like, I, I didn't even. I mean, they should be up on the wall somewhere. Like, where? Is that hey, there they are. Wow, that is a wall of awards. <laughs> is this the kind of beer that you probably have to dump every once in a while because it doesn't go right? I mean, I, I'm sure as a brewer, there's something that you've had to just like toss and it hurts and you're angry about it. But I would imagine this is the kind of beer where it would be more likely it would happen. I, I would say traditionally in craft beer, it may be one of those that you dump. But, but you don't have to do it because you're just such a good brewer. <laughs> That's what you want to tell me. That's basically what I'm getting at. Um, <laughs> He's got a bunch of awards that are all on the wall. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you know, he made sure he sat Ryan with the awards to his back. <laughs> so as I talk to him, his trophy. <laughs> this is great. I really enjoy it. Let's uh, let's talk about what's the next one here because this sure. one looks like something my wife would try. So this is blueberry allure. So uh, if you would have asked me seven years ago when we opened how what our most popular selling beers would be, I would scoffed at the idea of fruit beers being one of the things that we specialized in. I agree. In. I would have scoffed too. Yeah. yeah. You know, I went to German brewing school. I wanted to make lagers and Hefeweizen and, you know, get into the IPAs and stuff, but I wanted nothing to do with fruit. Yeah, but then what happened was that all these guys started going to breweries and they started bringing their wives and their girlfriends with them and they wanted to drink something. Right. And surprise, surprise. Yeah. People want blueberry beer all of a sudden. Hey, there you go. <laughs> so the, the first first fruit beer we ever made actually had apricots in it because I actually drank a lot of apricot nectar growing up, so I was like, well, I'm going to try fruit. I like apricots. Did pretty well. Then we made a raspberry wheat beer, which is our biggest selling beer of the year. It's called Summerly, which we just ran out of, unfortunately. But it's bright pink. It's dry, not too sweet, tons of raspberry flavor, and it just goes down super smooth. So it's we've kind of turned into probably the area's biggest fruit beer producer, right. which is surprising, but, you know, here we are, and it's what we do well. And I'll be honest with you. One of the things I don't do is have fruit beers. Like, I'm going to look at a blueberry beer and be like, all right, that's like 12th on the list out of 12 beers when I walk into a new brewery. It's just not my thing. Normally, it's because I feel like there's, like, syrup in it. Like, it feels like somebody put some kind of thing inside of a beer and they just added a flavor and that's what I hate about it. There's the secret. It's okay. real fruit. Mm. So it's an easy and cheap way to do it with fruit beers to put fake extracts in or yeah. high concentrated you know junk in it but we're using real fruit all the time. Uh, it is a little more expensive as Ryan likes to remind me. Yeah, well, Ryan's but, the one. <laughs> Ryan walks in and goes, yeah. hey, hey, listen. How listen, much fruit are we buying this month? Are you sure we can't use yeah. some sort of additives? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. tell me a little bit about what it's like dealing with an artist. Yeah, I mean, I've got to, you know, all these awards later and, and three locations and the success we've had, I've come to learn learn uh, to live with it. But yeah, early on, it was, uh, we'll call uh, like oil and uh, vinegar. I mean, it was uh, you know, artisanal versus, you know, yeah. anyone with the checkbook. Just yeah. uh, But now you have three locations. So obviously, follow the artist, right? Boy? Follow the artist. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't, don't ask questions. Let it happen. And uh, it's gone so far so good. good. So. Remember, Southside Pod, it's on demand. You can get it anytime, anywhere podcasts can be found, and always at southsidepod.com. Just search it up. Anytime you guys have a fight now, you pull that up, you play in that audio. I'm coming right remember, back to this right, moment. Remember when you said that. <laughs> That's what you tell them. What is this third one here? Let's finish it off with the style that, that I here we go. go for right away inside of a, a brewery. Tell me a little bit about this dark stout. Sure. So this is bourbon barrel aged personal chain letter with coffee and vanilla. Ooh. So this beer is an imperial stout that was aged in cave hill or rabbit hole cave hole cave hill bourbon barrels for almost a year. So it imparts all those like woody vanillin tannins that are in the, the, the barrel, but also the big bourbon flavor as well. So a good barrel aged beer starts with good bourbon. So luckily cave hill makes, yeah. or rabbit hole makes some really good bourbon. Uh, so then, you know, we let it age uh, for about a year, so it picks up all those flavors. Uh, and then, you know, we can do whatever we want f with it from there. But this is one of those beers that every year we kind of experiment with something different. Uh, so this year we added vanilla beans and then a local coffee roaster's roaster or coffee from Tugboat. So they're, they're out of the Chicago suburbs as well, make some fantastic coffee. So it's, we know we're getting the freshest, best stuff around. Look, I'm just going to take a guess at this right now. Uh, don't mind me. But you're telling me you put it in a barrel about a year ago, you put all kinds of stuff in it, you got local coffee, you got vanilla. I'm pretty sure this was a pandemic beer. 
You know, it could have been. But, <laughs> uh, barrel aged beers have been around for a while in this area, especially, so it's it's starting to get a little bit more competitive with the stuff you add to it. And you, you know, you want to make sure you're sourcing local ingredients for it. Just as important, it's just as important as people coming in drinking local beer. You want to try something made with locally made coffee, locally sourced vanilla beans, all that stuff. Well, guys, this is awesome. I got to try out a couple of beers. We had some friends stop by. I had a good time in Lamont. I appreciate you sitting down with me in Southside Pod. Thanks again for having us out to that Oktoberfest. That's a few episodes back. If anybody wants to hear audio from that party, check out Pollyanna Brewing in St. Charles, Roselle, and really the best location for the folks that listen to Southside Pod, Lamont 431 Talcott Avenue, the original place Ryan and Brian, thanks so much, guys. Cheers. Thank you for listening to see what's happening on the Southside Pod. On the Southside Pod. Join us again and be sure to tell a friend about the Southside Pod. About the Southside Pod. All things about the neighborhood we live in. All things about the places that we go it's the best side of chicago the south side